Okay, well, good afternoon once again. Uh, welcome to the Wednesday webinar. My name is Michael Wimberly, and we will be covering once again how to manage Office documents with Windchill 11. So once again, the overall objective of the webinar itself is to review and demonstrate how to manage Office documents inside of Windchill 11. Uh, this uh, general agenda that we go through, once again, is introducing myself and Boundary Systems itself, just talking about the topic um, and then covering the actual topic itself through a demonstration. So my name is Michael Wimberly. I am a uh, senior technical su support specialist inside of Boundary Systems. I've been working with PTC products for um, a little bit over 20 years now. I'm a certified trainer for Creo as well as Windchill classes, and of course, a certified implementer of Windchill as well. About boundary systems, well, one of the first things you need to know about boundary systems is we, of course, are a technology leader. Um, <clears throat> so some of our partners that help make us a technology leader are, of course, PTC, which is the software that we're looking at today, uh, Solid Thinking, eTrials, ZWCAD, and there are some other companies that we work with as well. We'll show you a list of some of the companies that we work with in one of the later overheads. Um, we're, all, of course, uh, continue to be one of the fastest growing companies in the greater Cleveland area, or I should say privately funded companies in the greater Cleveland areas. And some of our capabilities that allow us to be a, a technology leader are product lifecycle management, data management, CAD design and consulting, simulation, and then product development. Uh, what you're seeing on the uh, right side of the screen is simply a list of a few of the companies that we work with, either currently or in the past. Um, but of course, this isn't an all-encompassing list of our customer database. Um, and then once again, uh, some of the awards that we've won um, in the past and currently are we've been in the Inc. Uh, 5000. Um, and then we've also been in the uh, Weatherhead uh, 100, which is once again, Northeast Ohio's fastest growing companies. Um, so we've been in that over the last couple of years as well. Uh, some of our major accreditations are Windchill Implement uh, excuse me, Windchill Certified Implementer, um, also PTC uh, Preferred Service Provider, as well as a PTC Certified Training Partner. And then once again, some of the solutions that we actually offer are once again, PTC Solutions, Solid Thinking, eTraj, uh, Modex, uh, Mentor Graphics, uh, Flow EFD, and then ZWCAD. So we deal with uh, mode flow analysis. We deal with um, data integration as far as being able to integrate uh, one system into another system, such as you know integrating with Windchill through different applications or being able to bring get files out of different applications as well. So there's quite a few things that we can deal with inside of our different softwares, including 2D um, design through ZWCAD. All right, so just general information. So once again, if you have any technical questions, you can um, contact myself, being Michael Wimberly, and my number is 513-415-0747. Um, and then my email is mwimberly at boundarysys.com. Or if you have any sales-related questions, you can contact Carrie Dillon. Um, her number is 440-409-5898. Or once again, her email being cdillon at uh, boundarysys.com. So just as a reference point, uh, Boundary System as a whole, uh, the company itself is actually located in the greater Cleveland area, um, but we do have individuals um, across, actually across the country. Um, so we have myself, I'm actually in Cincinnati. We have people in different states around um, Ohio, as well as even having resources out on the West Coast direction as well. So we have quite a few things um, that we are doing uh, resource-wise um, that we are using. All right, so the general topic of this webinar is once again, being able to go in and manage office documents inside of Windchill. I know for the most part, um, a lot of people are using um, Windchill to just basically manage their CAD data, uh, but there is so much more that you can do with that. So a lot of things such as your, um, the, quote, the quotes that you have, the analysis documents that you have, some of the FEA analysis that you may run, um, statement of works, you know, any, any standard templates, PowerPoints, things like that that you may have, those, that information can be stored directly inside a windchill. Um, instead of storing it on a shared drive somewhere, you can put it in windchill and once again allow everyone to maintain or to have access to that particular documents or doc 
the document or documents. Um, the other benefit of that is once again, by you working inside a wind chill, um, you also still have the ability to go through and specify life cycles. So you can specify life cycles on documents as a whole, or if there are certain documents that need to go through a certain process, you can do that as well. So not only life cycles, but workflows. So all those things that you need to go in and have even a document go through its maturation stages, you can do that inside of Windchill as well. And then also keep in mind, just like CAD documents, as it goes from one life cycle to another life cycle, the permission changes. So we can also go through and set up permissions on those things as well, so that when you're initially creating that document, it's at a certain level. But then once that document, and it may be, you know, instructions documents for, you know, machines or whatever it may be. So once that item is released, you know, that manual is released, then you don't want to go in and have changes made to it. So same thing, when you're ready to make changes to it, then you revise that document. And now it goes from, let's say, revision A to revision B, and now you make whatever updates you need to make to that particular document. And now you have an updated version B of that or you know, revision B of that file that now people can look at versus the revision A of that particular file. So once again, by managing your office documents inside of there, you still once again have the full capabilities of Windchill um, to be able to manage that particular those particular documents. Once again, life cycles, permissions, you know, just simply access to the files. And they can actually be, of course, be stored inside of Windchill into their own folders if necessary, or even if you want to have a project, it's just simply document. You can do that as well. So at this point, we'll go ahead and look at a quick demonstration on this. <clears throat> so once again, this is your Windchill setup. So general layout, um, you can go through. And the way this is set up currently, we do have um, some files in here. So I'll go to uh, the folders and inside of there we actually have a folder specifically for our documents. Now the benefit of that as well is that you can go in and create an OIR or an object initialization rule that basically specifies when you create a document where that document goes. So you can actually have it just like your promotion request or your CAD files or your WT parts. You may have folders specifically for those. Well anytime you create a document file you can have that document actually automatically stored inside of the documents folder if you have one of those set up. So once again, you don't have to worry about them being strung out all in different products and, and locations and not, not knowing where to locate them other than searching. So what we're looking at here is once again our documents area. And then as you can see inside of here, we have several type of documents. So we have Excel files, we have Word files, we have PowerPoints, we even have, even have PDFs inside of here. So when inside a windshield, not only can we store just uh, Word documents, uh, but we can also store basically any type of electronic file. So a movie file, so if you've gone through and recorded um, a simulation or a test run of your product, you can actually um, take that AVI file, whatever the, the format is, and actually store that file directly inside of Windchill. So once again, it's the same thing. You have the permissions that you can go through and set on those particular files as well. So all that is available for you to go through and do directly inside of Windchill. So with this, so these are just simple documents here, but to go in and create a document or to add a document inside of Windchill, I'm inside of this particular folder. I can just come over here and specify I want to create a new document. Now inside of here, we can also go through and set specific document types. So we have many types of documents that we can create. So the document is the top level document that basically everything else is what we call a subtype underneath there. So you may have things like a presentation. So that may be your PowerPoint. So I'm going to go in and create a presentation and basically maybe have a, a template for that document. So once again, most companies do have you know, templates that you start with. So you may have letterhead. Well, that letterhead is how you always start your quotes. Or when you go in and create a presentation, you always start with, you know, this is our company standard uh, PowerPoint slides. So you can have that in there. So what we're able to do inside of Windchill is not only store that file, but also store that template. So now when I come over here and I want to specify that I want to start, and I'm just going to say a presentation, but I don't have a document for that. I can come over here and specify if I had a template. There is one, but I'm not sure what that one is going to do. But I can go through and specify any template that I've gone through and designated as a presentation type template. And now I start with my 
a PowerPoint presentation that is simply the default of with all the uh, company standard presentation information. So if I don't have a template, then I can act or I've gone in and created a document already. I can just simply come over here and say I want to create a document and use a local file. I can also go in and create a document um, using a URL. So instead of actually being a document, it's simply a link to another page. So it may be a document that's on, you know, a, a, an engineering page or a company website somewhere that you want to go through and document that. So the actual document itself is simply a link to something else. I can also go through and use external storage or once again, create one that just doesn't have a content. And I'm basically creating a, a, a holder. So I'm not actually going in and storing anything with it yet, but I will at some point. But I want to go through and denote that these are the documents that we're going to create for this particular project, but we just haven't actually created the documentation for it yet. So later on, I can come back in and update that document to actually now contain content, which is the documents that I've gone in and created. So I'm going to go over here and basically specify that I'm going to go in and use a local file, and then I simply browse for that particular file. So I have some files that I have created. And then inside of here, I can go through and specify you know, any of these files that I want to go through and use. So I'm going to go in and use um, the simulation startup document. And it's going to go through and add that document. Now, it automatically takes the name of that document and makes it the actual name of that file. Also, the way that it's set up, I'm actually using auto numbering. So it's basically going to go in and populate with just the default numbers inside of um, Windchill. I can, once again, turn that off. And if I have certain numbers that I want to use for documents, I can type in that. And that just simply becomes an available field for me to fill in. All right. So there's that particular document that I want to go through and create. And then once again, by default, it is going to my documents folder. So I don't have to do anything with that. Now I'm going to go in and select Next. Now, I can now go in and add any attachments that I may have that are associated with this document. So a lot of times we go in and you, we use um, reference documents to create the document that we have. So whether it's an actual whole document or maybe it's a web page that we use. So we're able to go through and maybe create a screenshot of that document to go in and, you know, as a JPEG and now attach it here. Or once again, if, it's, if it is a completely another document that we want to go through and attach, we can go in and do that. But our primary document is what we set as a document to create and everything here will simply be known or be listed as an attachment to that. So I can come over here and now specify that I want to go in and add an attachment for a local file. And in that same directory, I'm going to go in and use up this markup document or the doc document markup JPEG, sorry, and then open that up. So now I can go through and that's attached and then I can put a description of this is the um, marked up copy of the final document. So I have all of the information that was used or the document that was actually marked up to create our final piece of work. So. I now have that stored as well. So if any time we need to go back and look at what was done or why something was done, we have that documentation here. So we always have the ability to go through and store that information as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. And now it goes in and creates that documentation. And this is, once again, the icon here has changed. So it's actually a presentation. These are just standard documents. Um, we can also create reference documents or anything else that we want. But because what we uploaded was a Word document, the icon that it's showing is the actual Word document. Now, if I go in and do the information on that particular document, uh, so there's the general information for it. You can see that I basically uploaded that. I can also come over here to attachments, and there's my actual attachment with that specific JPEG associated with it. So now it shows the actual primary content being the actual original document and then the markup JPEG that I've gone through and added as well. So this is just monitored or maintained as, it, as an actual um, attachment. It doesn't actually have its own life cycle or anything associated with that. It just simply follows along with the document that we've gone in and created. So it's not its own independent document. 
All right, so let's go back to the documents folder. So we've gone in and created those documents. And once again, I can go in and use any documents from our hard drive to go in and create them. Um, I can go in and create them singularly by creating them one at a time. But there's also an option over here to go in and create new multiple documents. So we may have a bunch of documents that we want to go in and load inside of Creo. I'm sorry, inside of Creo, sorry, inside of Windshield. I can go in and select multiple documents. And then the same thing here, I'm going to go in and attach local files. And at this time, I'm actually going to go through and select more than one file. For this, I'm just going to go in and do two files. So I can go in and select, uh, we'll add this one as well. So I'll go through and select those three files to go in and add. And now it's adding all three of those at the same time. Now, the one thing about doing it this way is you don't have the ability to add attachments to each one of those, and you don't have all the, the different properties that you are. And all of these will be added as whatever type of a document you go in and add at that point in time. So if I did presentation, all of these will be presentation type documents. But this, I'm going to go ahead and leave it just a standard document type file. And once again, each one of those are created. As you can see, each one is now going to the actual documents folder. And then I can once again just complete the creation of those files. Uh, all right, so now those three files are now created with inside of Windchill. And then once again, I can go in and individually and manipulate each one of these. So those are files that I've gone in and pulled directly into Windchill. Um, the other thing that I can do, once again, pulling the files into Windchill, is there is also an option in here for new documents, upload documents from a compressed file. What that basically means is I can go in and simply find a zip file that has all the documents in it that I have. So maybe once again, I'm getting a bunch of documents from a customer, or we've gone in and released this product, and these are all the documents that were used to go in and release or associated with, the, with this release product. I can select that zip file, open it up, <coughs> excuse me, and then at that point, go ahead, if I want to add any comments or anything here, I can. All the files are going to go to the documents. When I go in and say, OK, it's now basically going to go in and create each document from that zip file. So there's another way of going in and adding your documents directly inside of Windchill. Now, the other thing that's beneficial is once again, we've just been working with inside of Windchill, so we've already had the documents there. We can also go in, if I want to go in and view any of these documents, so I can go in like this license server installation document. If I want to go in and view that, I can go in and select on that icon. <clears throat> now, currently, I have this file, or I have my system set up for desktop integration. So what it's going to do is going to go in and download this and actually open it with desktop integration. What that simply means is it's now going to use that application software, recognize the file type, and open it up in the proper um, application. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And I was downloading that file. And what's happening in the background uh, is basically saying it's downloaded from the server to my local file. Do I want to open it up? Yes, I do. And then I'm now able to go through and look at that particular document that I've gone in and checked out. I'm sorry, that I've downloaded. All right, so I can do any of that inside of here. Um, I can also, um, I'll just close that out, close out the document. So I can go in and open up any document that we have inside of here. It also recognizes a PDF. So I can actually go through and open that up directly inside the PDF as well. Oh, and it actually opened it up in a separate window. But that's the PDF that I was actually using. So this one doesn't have direct access to Windshield, but it actually does allow it, once again, recognizing the actual file type. All right, so the other thing that I can do is I can go directly into Word. And I can go in and open up uh, a document. And I can enable the editing of that. And why is it not showing my 
integration. For some reason, it wasn't turned on, but that's okay. All right, so I'm not sure why it wasn't turned on, but inside of desktop integration, the, the, the purpose of desktop integration is to integrate Office products directly inside a windshield. So when I went in and made sure the application was, the add-on was actually associated, now I have my windshield capabilities. So now I have the documents here, and at this point, I can go in and create a new file. Now, the benefit of this is at this point, I have this document here, and if I create a new file, it's actually going to go through and now take the file that I have, that I currently have open, and it's going to go in and use that as the file to create the new document. So I'm going to go in and once again specify where I want it. So I'm going to go into the blower, and then directly in the blower, I'm going to go into the documents folder. So that's where I want it to go. So now when I select next, it then once again gives me the information of that particular file or this file that we're actually going in and using. So it's using that same name to go through and set it up. Once again, the directory that it's going to go through and create it in. And then I can go through and complete the creation of that particular file. Now that file is now uploaded inside of Windchill. So when I go back to Windchill, that document is now will then be there, sorry. So there's that new document that we just created. So I can do it inside of here. And if there's a file existing that I want to go through and open inside of Windchill, once again, I just open up the application. Desktop integration is there. I'll go directly to open. And then it's just like inside of Creo. It gives me the ability to simply browse through the database. So I'm going to go into this product. And I'm going to go into my blower assembly, go into the documents. And then I can go in and specify which document I want to go through and open up. And I'm going to go in and pick just some document. Uh, I'm not even sure what that one is, but we'll find out in a second. So what it's doing at this point is going to go through and actually download that file. And then actually open it up inside of, oh, you know what? I bet that was one of those bad files. Nope. So it's downloading it, and then it actually goes through and opens it up inside of Word. I did have some files that weren't working properly. Sorry about that. So I'll just open up the file that I just went in and downloaded or that I uploaded. Now, once again, the benefit of this, because I'm opening it up and it's just like inside of Creo, is when you open it up, it's asking you, are you basically, are you going to modify this? So it wants to know, do you want to check out this file? So I can go over here and say yes. And now by checking it out, of course, I have the ability to now go through and update the data. I can promote it as necessary. I can go through and do any of the adding um, of the data, including, of course, checking the file back in. So when I go back into Windchill and I refresh again, I can then see that now I have that document checked out. And then, like I said, it works just like you do inside of Creo. I can go in and make any changes that I want to, you know, adding text, removing text, you know, whatever it is. Added information, you know, and then I can go through and I can check that file in. If I want to, I can just do my regular save. And right now, once again, it's saving it locally until I'm ready to check that file back into the database. Once I'm ready, I can go in and once again, just simply select check in. And I have the same check in information. Do I want to go give a description of what I'm checking it in or why I'm checking in? Maybe the changes. Next, once again, additional comments if necessary. And I can keep it checked out. I can send the local copy to the recycling bin. So basically, once I'm done, I don't want this on my hard drive anymore. So once I check it in, I don't want it in a folder. I want it now basically gone into my recycling bin so I don't have basically that working copy local anymore. Or I can go in and say keep the document open because I'm just checking it in for somebody else to do a quick overlook um, of the document before I continue on with it.
So either one of those, I'm going to go ahead and say send it to the recycling bin and then go ahead and complete it and it'll go through and basically remove that. And then once I go into um, wind chill again, refresh, I'll go ahead and I'll see that now that file is at a um, 1.2 and then I can see the history of that particular file just like you can any other file. So desktop integration once again simply allows you to go through and use any of the Microsoft products to go through and actually um, access Windchill directly. So once again, I can go in and open files directly from the database. I can go in and create new files with a new file, new document um, that I actually would have open. So when I do open, I do get directly to Windchill, but of course, just like anything else, I can go ahead and browse on my hard drive, find the file that I actually want to go through and use, and then actually upload that file into Windchill specifically. So, and not only does it work in Word, but it also works inside of Excel. It also works inside of um, inside of PowerPoint. So you still have that Windchill tab inside of there that will allow you to go through and upload and download different files directly inside of there. So all you're doing is once again connecting to your actual server that you're going in and using. So once again, desktop integration is great because once again, you're now not only keeping your CAD files inside of Windchill, but you're also now keeping all of your document files. So that entire project that you create can now, all that information can be stored inside of Windchill into one central repository that everybody can have access to. And once again, it's real time. So I don't have to worry about creating a PDF for it if I don't need to. I just have the office document inside of there. And once again, a lot of times PDFs are created because you basically want to make that file a read-only file. Well, by using the lifecycle information inside of Windchill, I can now release that document and then go ahead and set that to well, the permissions of that are simply read and download. Nobody can check it out. Nobody can upload a new copy of it. None of that can be done directly inside of Windchill or inside, inside of Word or Office without having to go in and revise it to go in and make the changes. Now, so I can go through and open existing files that we just saw um, inside of uh, Windchill, but I can also come over here and if I, if I happen to be working offline um, or somebody gave me a new file, I can come over and take this file and if I right click on it, I can also go through it and check out and, and edit. So what this allows me to do allows me to check it out. And if somebody has a newer version of that file, maybe I'm not controlling it. Maybe it's a vendor that's basically updated their documentation. So I need their latest version of the documents inside of Windchill. So I can go in and do a checkout and edit. And what that does, it brings up the same dialog box that we use to go through and attach the original file. So the first thing it will do is I can actually go through if, uh, and use the path that it was from before, or I can come over here and simply browse, find that new file, upload that new file into Windchill once again to go through and update the latest version of that. And then that simply becomes uh, version two of that file, just like when we updated it normally. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And once again, the object is still checked out to make available to others, select check in or undo checkout to go in and do it. So that file currently is still checked out. I don't want it, so I'll just simply undo checkout on it. But the other thing that we can do is if I do want to come in and now this is the document that we've been working on that we want to go through and change. So at that point, I can come over here and I can go in and say check out and download. Now it checks it out and then I download a lock, local copy of that file that I can now go through and begin to edit. But once again, by me having it checked out, no one else can upload another copy of that file. They can download it, but they can't upload a newer version of that file. So once again, I'm in control of that, just like once again, we're dealing with our Creo files. So, and then if you just want to download the document to actually see the document, view it, there is an option in here to simply download the primary content. Now, there is something to be aware of that when you go through and you do your downloads at this point with desktop integration, when you go through and select that, what it's actually doing is it's downloading this desktop integration file. So it's not actually downloading the actual document. So it's simply downloading a link 
that basically is specifically for desktop integration. If you want to go through and download the original file type, then we'll need to go through and change our preference. So to do that, and it's a simple preference. So underneath um, our quick links, under settings, under preferences, just inside of here, you can go in and type in download and search and it'll bring in this attachment area. So basically you have the ability to change how your attachments are downloading. So what we have it set right now is it's using desktop integration functionality to download files, which basically means when I download it, my intention is to simply open it up inside the application, not to simply create a local copy of it just to have. So what I can do with that is simply go in and right click, set that preference, and then change that preference back to use the basic browser functionality. And now it'll download, sorry, it'll download the actual original file type. So when I go back to documents and I go in and select on this file to download primary content, I'm now actually downloading the Excel shop, Excel file. So just keep that in mind. If you're trying to download uh, just regular copies of those files, you'll need to go through and go through that method. Um, so you're just downloading that information. So, um, and then I think it's under documents. Oh, there's a document. Oh, it's thinking too much. All right. My browser behaving slowly. So I'm not going to open up another one because it'll may slow it down even more. So at this point, that's the general information. Once again, we can go through and download anything with desktop integration set up. We can go in and make sure that we're downloading the files into those applications. And it actually does store the file on the hard drive. That's actually what I was going to show you. There's actually a folder that it actually creates that it actually stores the file on the hard drive. So the physical file is downloaded. There's just a desktop integration file that is actually downloading it to when you're opening up that particular file. So it's basically like a workspace for um, your document files. All right, so at this point, um, that concludes the demonstration. So at this point, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to ask them inside of your um, go to meeting session. There is an area for questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to go in and ask them. So we'll hold on for a little bit to see if there's any questions. And yes, uh, desktop integration, just before you, if, if somebody asks, desktop integration is an add-on to Windchill. Um, and it is actually available in your um, downloads area. So inside of Windchill. Um, in your quick links, there's an area for software downloads and it would actually be available inside of here. Um, and actually it's not showing inside of here, but it will be listed inside of here. Oh, there it is, sorry, desktop integration. So you would simply download that. And then when you actually set it up, of course you're connecting it to your windchill server and it actually now adds that windchill tab inside of um, your office doc or office applications. All right, so it looks like at this point there aren't any questions. So I want to once again, thank you all for your time. Um, I hope this was an um, enlightening demo. And if you do have any questions, once again, pertaining to any technical areas, feel free to contact me uh, once again through phone or through email. Or if you have any sales related questions, feel free to contact Carrie Dillon. Um, you can also go in and open up a support ticket with us if you have any technical issues outside of this that you want to want us to look into uh, through support.boundarysys.com. Um, you also can go through and visit, I'm sorry, add an email, <coughs> pardon me, through support at boundarysys.com, and that'll go to our support team, and we'll be able to assist you there. 
And you can also visit us, of course, on our website to find any additional information for us. So we can go to our website and then once again, our training schedule is there, location, so on and so forth, and then additional hands-on workshop with there's some coming up um, in different areas in Ohio, Pennsylvania, I think even in Michigan that are coming up for hands-on workshops. Um, so we do have some coming up. And then we also, of course, if you wanna find out about what webinars we have coming up, you can also view that as well. So under events, go to webinars and you can see the diff our different schedule up to now. So this is the one that we just did, which is managing Microsoft um, Office documents. The next one coming up is piping and then of course project plan. So you can see those and the actual dates for those and you're able to register right there. So, and we also send out bullets for each one of those. So if you want, if you um, if you want to get that bullet, if you don't already have it, you can go through and send us an email, and we'll add you to our list. So you make sure you receive our emails that we send out as well. So once again, I want to thank you for your time, and you guys have a great rest of the afternoon. Thank you for attending. Bye.